Hello everyone, welcome to the fourth episode of Think Like Mama. Today we have a lovely lady with us, she's a mama of two and she's been working for one of the Dubai's preschools. Her name is Nita, she works at Maple Bear and she's going to tell us today how we as parents can deal with the seemingly overwhelming task of finding the right nursery preschool school for our kids. Ladies, if you're new to our channel, please subscribe, hit the notification button. It will be a pleasure to have you all back. We bring out new content every other week, every other Sunday for you. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Hello, Nida. Welcome to Think Like Mama. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. So tell us, Nida, um, how old are your kids and how long have you been working for the preschool Maple Bear? I have two boys. The older one is three and a half and the younger one is two and a half. And I've been with Maple Bear about 10 months now. I started late August of 2017. So what is your, what is your role there and what does your day-to-day -day look like? When I first started, I was just kind of coming back out of a maternity leave, or maternity leaves, I should say, and I took on an admin role, which was a little bit more low, low pressure, but gave mm. me an exposure to coming back to a full-time job. Um, now, I've very quickly changed into a communications and business development role, nice. um, which means that no two days are the same. Sometimes mm. I'm doing voice acting and other days I'm writing. Some days I'm out networking with clients or other days I'm trying to close a big sale. That sounds mm -hmm. so perfect. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds like the perfect job. It's, it's quite interesting. No two days yeah. are ever the same. That's nice, that's yeah. nice. It keeps you active, it keeps you, you know, out there to see what's happening in the market. Yeah. That's right. For instance, this week I've got to jet out to Abu Dhabi to the embassy, but on Thursday I'm also going to a media event with the entrepreneur and I'm going to learn from other women how they're doing what they're doing in Amazing. the entrepreneurship field. So yeah. it's very it's a very exciting yeah. for me. Oh, yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. Like, talking about the market, here in UAE we have certain sometimes we feel perhaps that it's a bit restricted in terms of childcare. Can you tell us um, which one are the options that we have as parents for childcare here in, in UAE? I think the UAE, like you said, it's a bit of an overwhelming experience because there's so many different options and people here are from everywhere. Everybody's doing a different thing. Mm -hmm. um, we see a lot of families that have nannies at home from the very first stages. We see moms who are going at it alone and really hunkering down for the first couple of years and yes. putting their full attention in. And then we see lots and lots of preschools of all stripes and colors mm -hmm. where children from as early as four months can get in going up to even at a preschool up to six years of age mm -hmm. then there are the big schools which will also accept children from upwards of three years so there's a multitude of options yes. i think yeah, yeah which one would you recommend and why you know this was a question that i had to ask myself when i first moved to dubai when i first moved to ue i should say because the options are so many i realized that not one size fits all i think every mom has to do what works best for her mm -hmm. Um, I'm a firm believer that in the first year, at least, it's very important for mom to be around as much as possible mm -hmm. because yeah. nothing, nobody can replace oh, what it mom would be does. Idea. Yes. <laughs> but it's not always possible. It's not always possible. Laws don't allow it sometimes. Mm -hmm. Your life doesn't allow it sometimes. Yeah. A lot of us love what we do and it's hard to take that break as well. So I can't say it's one or the other, but I do think that as children get into their toddler time, the toddler months, that's mm -hmm. when it becomes crucial to look at options that allow them to socialize a little bit more mm -hmm. and get a little bit more balance between what's happening at home and opportunities to get out. Mm -hmm. When we talk about toddler years, what age exactly do you refer to? I found that when my older ones hit around 15 months, he mm -hmm. was ready. Mm -hmm. He yeah. needed to yeah. socialize. He mm -hmm. needed. I wasn't able to do everything mm -hmm. that I needed to do or yeah. I thought I could do for him at home. So to me, it's a little bit right after those first steps are mm -hmm. taken. Okay. Actually, this is quite interesting for our viewers also. Um, we're kind of this breadth of opportunity here, right? Mm -hmm. My son went to nursery when he was 15 months, so did yours. And uh, Romy's daughter is at home with a nanny. So within just this uh, couch, we have yeah, so different covered a couple yeah, of options yeah, different already. ways yeah. of doing it. And in fact, mm -hmm. I think uh, my older one, I should correct that, my older one didn't end up going until he was two oh. and a half because my younger one was still at home so yes. I was at home of course. so We're that was something that yeah it was a it was I mean it was coincidental mm -hmm. but he all um, he took he benefited from me being able to be home at that time it was mm. something that my husband supported and let, you know let me do um, but my younger one I felt that I was ready to put him in yeah. even though he was yeah he was younger than when my older yeah. my son, so yeah. 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 No, I felt the same way for me it was 
um, it was by necessity mm -hmm. um, and I'm so grateful that it did happen because I don't know if it has to do with him being a boy but I feel that on days when he comes from nursery the evening is so much quieter we come home we have cuddle time on the couch we read a book we listen to music or a story and we have food and then you know shower in bed of course and on days where he's not at nursery i just feel like i'm struggling so much more to put him calmly to bed at night because it seems like there's still all this energy that he's pent up and of course if you're a working mom and you're juggling child and job during the day if you don't have any other option mm -hmm. then that's exactly, you can't give him that same outlet, right? So that's something that I realized, the difference between one and the other very strongly. That's a very interesting experience because you, you're getting, like you're saying, during the week, both. You're seeing yeah. that structured day at school, but you're, he's also getting yeah. a lot of your attention at home, yeah. and each day is different based yeah, on what you yeah. think. That's a very exactly. interesting. For me, my kids go five days a week, mm -hmm. so I've got that, I kind of know what to expect around 5.30 every yeah. day. So props to you for for knowing how to how to manage that. Yeah, and for me it was a shift. Like up until recently, it was three days, eight to five thirty, and now it's four days a week, eight to three. Ah, okay. And I feel that for him it was necessary to cut the days a bit because five thirty was very long. That's a long mm -hmm. day. He was very tired coming back, and I also feel that uh, actually for me and my work it's easier to have consistency during the day. So that extra day that he's he's kind of taken care of in the morning actually helps me structure my time a lot better and and yeah having him home but my my hesitation was clearly that i was like am i ready at 15 months he's still so young yeah am i ready to give him away five days a week and i wasn't and it's yeah. nice that we have these options of staggering the days yeah. as well yeah but you're not you don't have fun. to commit to five days mm -hmm. eight to five thirty if you feel that you or your child are not ready to to separate and, and that's yeah. it, you have to trust your instinct, that you need to know when you're yeah. ready or what your child is ready that for. That is it. That's how yeah. And I think we all have different factors will make us ready as parents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Personally, um, to find the right place, you know, the, the only interaction that we do have with these places, with the preschools uh, and nurseries, is just when you go, you got to walk around and then maybe some open events. That's all the culture that you yeah. get to know about the place in advance before making the big decision as you ladies mm -hmm. mentioned you know yeah, of yeah. sending your child uh, so many hours during the week That's to yeah. another place that it's not home so i think um like nina mentioned my daughter is at home now with a nanny if i'm having to start this process of making a decision where should i send her um what could you tell our audience how can they make this decision like which one are the factors that could be crucial in terms of feel at ease the moment that you chose the place to send your children to. I think, you know, as, as with other things, moms, parents have to rely a little bit on their instinct, you know, the gut feeling you get about where you go. But at the same time, take advantage of the tours that they offer that most schools are very welcoming. They like parents to come in mm -hmm. and often they can arrange for a tour to happen during class time or during school mm -hmm. time and you really get to see the teachers in action, you see the children doing what they do, yeah, whether cool. it's their lunch time or their outdoor play and you get a feel for the energy of the place yes. and you get a feel for, you might not see the curriculum being implemented directly because you're not going to sit in the classroom half the time. But then there are schools, for example, at Maple, where we do something where we allow for a settling period. So off, a lot of schools are doing that as well, mm. where parents can come in, spend two hours oh, a day. Oh, that's yeah. very common sit back in the home, home, actually. Yeah, okay. In Argentina, it's a must. Okay. And you, some schools, it's even for a month. You go for a month wow. with your child for two hours. And you're seeing your child in yes, the classroom. Yes, you're seeing yeah. your child. And then it goes progressively, like, less time, in, basically. You yeah. start maybe two hours. One and a half, one hour. Yeah. Wean off. I love that you're doing this because I haven't heard it here actually. Very it, I think it's yeah. important, and I think if it, it's it's a testament to how the school feels about what they're yeah. doing mm -hmm. yeah. by welcoming yeah. the parent into the classroom and yeah. say, "Hey, you take your time," because it's just as as much of an adjustment as this for the child. It is for the mom as well because <laughs> yeah, true. you're leaving a part of you somewhere yeah. and you don't know how your child is going to handle yeah. it. You don't know if they're going to cry all the time or you don't know whether they're going to take to that teacher. So Absolutely. That yeah. is, take, take the opportunity to use that settling program or ask for one yeah. if you want to. Yeah, it was the same in my case, yeah. For the first week, I went in every day and I, I think on the first day I gave him there for two hours. On the second day, he was there for four hours. On the third day, he was for two hours again. So it was yes. during the first week, it was exactly that. And he was staying shorter hours. And then afterwards, we switched over to his normal hours. And, and it was nice because it could, yeah. Yeah. It was shorter times. I was spending a bit of time in the morning with him there. Not the full two hours, but 
just to get him settled and to, to, to you know be able to let go of me and me being able to let go of him. Yeah. yeah, and it gives you a chance to interact with the school as well and see how you feel about it, yeah. whether what you think is the promise is being lived up to and sure. how often you can access some of those things are important, yeah. and, and especially in the early years and mm. leaving your child out of school. What would you say are traps that parents can easily fall into when uh, choosing? I think, especially with the multitude of options that we have here, sometimes just because it sounds like an it's attractive price point doesn't mean that it's it is very expensive early child education yes. is expensive <laughs> so yes you want to maximize your budget mm. but recognizing that sometimes a lower budget might mean that the, the quality of the professionals that are in the classroom mm -hmm. might be compromised that is something i think is one of the few things yeah. that can be a trap if you so want to put yeah. it where a framework might be there, a curriculum might be there, you might see that there is an active approach to how the child is going to learn slash play, but go out, take a look at what the person's qualifications are that is mm -hmm. in the classroom, because mm -hmm. if you're going to go that route of going into early child education, then you need to make sure that they're leap years ahead of what you can do at home by hiring someone to yeah. take care of your child. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. When we talk about the curriculum that the children undertake in the preschools, which one are your concerns about those curriculums that seem to be very strict for children under the age of three? Um, this might have a little bit more of a personal dimension for me because being Canadian, we really believe in play-based learning. Mm -hmm. and up until the age of five, six, yes. a lot of the Canadian curriculum is one of the, or the Canadian education system is ranked higher. You see this in Finland, you see it a lot in Scandinavian mm -hmm. countries. Yeah. They believe in allowing children to play as much as possible as a means of learning. Okay. Um, while I, th I think a curriculum is a very strong aspect of early years education, mm -hmm. but there's, not all curriculums are, are equal. So for me, the concerns are that Prior to the age of three, children should be given as much opportunity to experiment okay. rather than forced to sit into a system or fit into a system. Yeah. Academic rigor yeah. is actually going to hinder them in the long run mm -hmm. in, in terms of their passion towards learning or their okay. ability to want to experiment yeah. or apply themselves in different mm -hmm. ways. So, so yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I guess without, without getting into teaching methodologies, which I'm not going to speak about because I'm not a teacher, mm -hmm. I would say that too much academic focus in the early years is not going to bring you what you think it's going to bring you. It's not going to bring you the value. It might actually be long run Did in the long run. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I was so shocked because in Germany it's exactly that, like a kindergarten where they go after the age of three, from mm -hmm. three to six. That's like play with dolls and cars and you might do a little collage and stick some flowers or whatnot you have outdoor play and and that's pretty much it <laughs> and then here i find out that he has to wear a uniform and it's like in the morning we do curriculum in the afternoon it's more like a yeah. guarding play Keeping the child and mm -hmm. i'm like wow this is like crazy and i went to a couple of other <laughs> nurseries and it seemed like a school yeah it was like it was like a i know it's early learning centers but it seemed so school and teacher and strict and this and that and I was like this is nothing like it seems like what we do at home has no value compared to that but like you say it's actually sometimes even the other way around where you feel like allowing mm -hmm. the child that space is beneficial and it's so I'm important. like yeah. now where I have my son I feel very confident that that's a good balance that they strike and um, we have this uh, the I care app I'm sure you know okay, okay, yeah. and so we get pictures of what they do and I can actually follow and see okay in the same day there is circle time and in then there's a water-based activity then there's sit down and writing something then there's story mm -hmm. time so there's oh, a variation so yeah. of things of how their day goes yeah exactly and you see that it's not even though they say curriculum and you know this is the school part where the teacher is present and this is the, it's not like that but i think you really do have to look and ask those questions ahead of time and kind of find find the one that that suits your child and i i, mm -hmm. I fully agree i i really believe in play-based learning yeah and yeah. in those early years you know i like i keep saying i think the more they're allowed to play and i play with different things or mm -hmm. try it their own way they're more confident when it comes down to yeah. really reaching for those books or when they have to sit down with the textbooks. Ultimately. I love it. Yeah. I love. It. I, I never stopped and 
I don't know, maybe in the audience you can leave us the comments below telling us what, if you ever stopped and thought, you know what, um, what I'm doing today for my child or whatever decision I'm making today, how is this going to affect him in the long run? Right. Yeah. And this is not something that you can actually see. This is directly linked to how they're going to feel mm -hmm. towards something that is going to give them the best benefits of their lives, which is learning, yeah. You know? yeah. growing, yeah. knowing what they're doing. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. I'm, I'm pleased you mentioned that because yeah. it's something that I really take out of today. Yeah. And I would, I would add that books and memorization and f focusing on learning how to write all the alphabet, that is an old method of or old approaches to education. Mm -hmm. Where things are going now, what the future looks for is children or workers who can be very creative and mm -hmm. giving children mm -hmm. a stronger sense of creativity or yeah. making them more confident in their creativity yeah. is probably the best thing we can do right now for yeah. our moms. I love yeah. that. Yeah. I love it. And I think that leads me to the next question. How can parents who have decided, like uh, Romy, to keep their children at home, what can they do to kind of stimulate them in the same way and keep them involved and keep them developing um, at home? So what, what is it kind of that they can take from a nursery or a preschool approach and take to their house? I think, like I said, play, play is so easy. Mm -hmm. Everybody can do it. Anybody can do it. And it's something that you can do 15 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day give your child the opportunity, but also interact with your child and play with your child. That is, I think, the most mm -hmm. important thing that we, that we can do. So for a mama who is trying to decide which route to go down, whether to keep the child at home with a nanny or go into a, a preschool type of setting, what could you give her as advice? I, again, you know, it's, are you ready? Is your child ready? <laughs> and more importantly, do consider that as they become, in, as they get closer to those toddler years or further into the toddler years, mm -hmm. the need for socialization is so important. Mm -hmm. So whether or not you have a nanny at home, mm -hmm. give them all the opportunities they can to get out there, take advantage of play groups or community groups, give your child with the nanny, without the nanny, with yourself, yeah. that opportunity to learn from their peers because studies show that children start learning more so by seeing other children and yeah. from their peers oh, yeah. than they do from adults, particularly language acquisition. Their language will, or what, how much words, how many words they're learning or how frequently they're speaking mm -hmm. to someone that is really interacting with them mm -hmm. is going to make the difference in their long-term abilities in the classroom mm -hmm. or getting them ready for, for future learning. So if you're trying to decide between with structure on whether keeping a nanny for the long run until the mm -hmm. child is off to big school, Keep in mind the socialization aspect mm -hmm. and okay. try to find a balance, whether it's two days a week or whether it's five days and you decide that you're not going to mm -hmm. you know, have full-time nanny care, the socialization is yeah. the key there. Yeah. And for everyone uh, who's not been watching our previous videos, maybe this is the moment to go back to the video we did with Mary Lise from Moms and Tots. This is one of those groups where you get early stimulation for your toddlers that you can take advantage of if you decide to stay in the home setting with a nanny. Mm -hmm. And one final question, um, we already know that my child is at home with a nanny, do you recommend uh, for me and for all the mamas there who are in the same position, do you recommend to have like a schedule throughout the day for the nanny or just to give like general directions and then just hope that they will be followed? You know, I think structure is important. I mm -hmm. find that the structure gives when when children those years or from what I've learned children in those in the early years mm -hmm. structure gives them an ability to expect what's going to come next mm -hmm. and that yeah. helps them stay centered yeah. that okay. helps them you know from getting into those tantrums, tantrums yeah. yeah and it helps okay, whatever them. helps taking them out of the tantrums yes that's let's right isn't it, 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 yes. it right oh, yes <laughs> nobody wants to deal with a two and a half year old <laughs> no breaking down a them, wall. Yes. <laughs> so I think a schedule is very good I mean be flexible yeah you know it's not minute by minute and just because something gets missed one day doesn't mean it's the end of the world but a schedule will help you it would definitely help your child it would definitely help the nanny know what she's expected to of do course. as well and how she can help the child the best Great. thank you so thank maybe you. as a last point in three short sentences or short bullet points so to speak how do we set our children and i know you've answered part of this already throughout the interview how do we set them on the right path to lifelong learning three things that i would say on that um read read as much mm -hmm. as early as often as possible mm -hmm. uh, there it's never too early to start reading and they it opens up a world for imagination for creativity for language books are our best friend mm -hmm. um, play 
play as often as possible, play with toys that give them a chance to experiment, mm -hmm. let them do things the way they want to do them with the toy, mm -hmm. even if it means turning it upside down and not really playing it with the right way. Yes. But that's how children learn to manipulate yeah. and they yeah. learn how, what their skills are. Yeah. And finally, speak to your children as much as possible. Talk to them, make eye contact with them, and spend, you know, even it's five minutes talking about the same teddy bear every single day. <laughs> not only is it so that, important, yeah. you know, it, speak to them in your language, particularly yes. in Dubai. You know, we're all from different places. We True. all have, bring our own True. Libra cultures there. And yes, we speak English every day, yes. but children can learn multiple languages in oh, the yeah. early years, mm -hmm. and it's so important. But when, it's spoke, when they're spoken to rather than spoken at by their own parents, that's what makes a difference in the long run, in, in every aspect brilliant, of life. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that you say reading, this is brilliant because we actually were invited to participate in one of your reading events with Maple Bear and we brought the kids and it was so much fun. Um, we read a little story with them and mm -hmm. then they got to discover the elements of the story through like messy play and interaction and it was a really fun afternoon. We really do hope that there's mm -hmm. something like this coming up again and obviously if so, we'll make sure to let our viewers know so they can participate. Thank you for saying that because I had a lot of fun with you guys there as yeah. well. Um, <laughs> we are planning on doing more of those. Great. But what you brought up right now about integrating the messy play with the reading that's something that we can do at home and it's reading doesn't just mean doesn't yeah. have to just mean sitting in a corner with the book you can do so much mm -hmm. more with it and get involved in the story so it's it's always fun to play on that to yeah. build on just reading yeah. beautiful mm -hmm. beautiful okay thank you very much nina for okay. being here today it was a pleasure to have you you left us and our audience with a lot of useful tips uh, useful ways to help us raise our children. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And for you all mamas out there, please check our website thinklikemama.com and don't forget to subscribe here or here, here. There, 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 there. Here, there. here. here. Yeah. every time. Press the subscribe <laughs> button. <laughs> subscribe to our channel to see more stories of our lovely mamas and our social media platforms as well. So to all the mamas out there, see you see soon. You soon.